My name is Zachary Mitchum. I'm the Information Security Officer for the University of North Carolina in Wilmington. Pray for me. I'm from Macon, Georgia. I can't even say hello in five minutes, okay? <laughs> but the purpose of my presentation is to provide you an informational overview about insider threats. We're going to cover these four topics very quickly. What are insider threats, the types, the damages associated with it, and prevention, some preventive measures to take, control measures to reduce the uh, possibility of uh, having it impact your opportunity. Well, this is the problem. Look, as an information security officer, a lot of times we spend a lot of our uh, time uh, on external threats, okay? Overlooking those that are very important, the people that have the keys to the kingdom. The inside, and there are two types really, malicious and malignant or malevolent, that we say, well, the threat is just as bad or, and, and, and corrosive even if it was malicious, intended, or unintended. But the malicious threat is the, uh, a, a, a big one. Financial loss associated with this threat. Look, who wants their ID stolen, right? Who would ever want someone to get into their accounts? So if you're a tailor at a bank, you have ac uh, access to that information. Repu uh, reputational damage. Uh, it corrodes the confidence of your client base when your information has been uh, tamper with, as in the case with TJ Maxx, who shops there anymore, right? Operational disruption, you can have a, a distributed denial of service. Oh, you do, right? <laughs> the a distributed denial of service, right? And it causes us to be delayed in a lot of our processes that we deal with day to day. Some of the unforeseen hazards are in the enterprise. We, we don't know what we don't know. I mean, it takes a long time to get back up once you're down. It's not like something you just magically turn on a switch and you're up and operating. So these are some of the things associated with somebody putting in malicious code or something and you had no idea what's going on. These are some examples of some malicious threats. The Walker case with John Walker, I don't know if you know who that is. He was a petty officer. Uh, during the Cold War, he helped the uh, Russians hack into our environment. Uh, we have a malicious threat like the Galleon Group. And this was where the CEO was doing insider trading. We have logic bombs that were the case with uh, Fannie Mae. I can't go into detail about a logic bomb, but everybody will get a raise after this briefing. Mal <laughs> malicious threats, uh, uh, either intentional, like a disgruntled uh, employee that would plant a logic bomb, right? Sen sensitive data placed on inappropriate media, like a, a website that you put FERPA data on. Now, these are some malevolent or unintentional uh, types of threats, like uh, having uh, data on a flash drive that we have in Afghanistan and soldiers were selling them in local markets. That was a threat uh, to our operational security. These are some preventions, right? Regulatory compliance and oversight, people keeping eyes, big brother, on you. That will keep you from uh, trying to do sneaky things, internal audits. So when you do more internal audits, obviously you are less likely to try to steal if uh, somebody's keeping a tab on you and trying to measure your uh, uh, functionality with what's going on in your environment. Rotation of duties, right? If you're a programmer uh, in program area A, you move them to program area B. So you keep them off uh, guard by doing that, rotational. Uh, we have separation of duties, role-based access controls, right? You don't have access to things that you don't have a need to know. Why would I give you the keys to the kingdom if you only need the keys to the, uh, your, your mailbox, right? So we restrict that with these control measures. The investment in the employee, okay? We give you training on how to avoid simple things like pressing the stop button. Do not do that, you idiot, right? Uh, so we want to invest in them to make them aware of the things that could be catastrophic to our environment, whether intentionally or unintentionally, willing or unwillingly. Data loss prevention systems, this is like to prevent the exfiltration of data from our systems through egress, right? You're sending out sensitive information through emails, right? Social security numbers, that type of thing. Automated systems can, automated systems can help us prevent that. Information security awareness, I go around and give these kind of talks to uh, uh, prevent, uh, you're saying, I had no clue, I was clueless. I don't know about those types of things. Regulatory compliance and oversights, we talked about that, role-based access. We also can put whistleblower programs in place. Hell have no theory like a woman scorned. In the case of the Walker case, 
his, his wife turned him in. That concludes my briefing. Thank you for your patience.